Good evening. Before we get started tonight, I'd like to go over a little bit about what Hunters of the Mythos is. You might have seen it on the title card, but you might not exactly be sure what's going on here. Well, Hunters of the Mythos, it is run by um, a person from the French Arkham Horror community, and it's a bit of a semi-competitive, fun league style of uh, play for Arkham Horror the card game. This season, season one, we're doing the Forgotten Age, and I was attracted by a lot of the creative elements that um, this, this member of the French community has uh, inserted into it, having to do with scoring and other, um, other optional paths that we could take. And I'm going to go, f go through a few of those right now. So Hunters of the Mythos, at its core, it's league play. And as part of league play, there are a bunch of different divisions which are listed up here. We have solo at four different difficulties. We have multiplayer at four diff different difficulties, which can be tackled two-handed, which um, I'll be doing. I'll, I have a team in the multiplayer standard division. But we also have some really interesting ones, namely we have drafted divisions, and we have the Yithian Cup, and then we also have a mode called Serial Hunters. I'm going to show you how all those work. Drafted here, it's actually really interesting. The way Drafted works is everybody goes to a website here called Arkham Draft, and this is also uh, maintained by a member of the community named um, Jacques Insan. Um, feel, f feel free to give him a pat on the back if you ever see him in the wild. And what Arkham Draft lets you do is it lets you draft a deck by, um, doing, by letting you do card picks for uh, different options. In fact, I'm going to actually, um, just, just for funsies, we're going to draft a Father Mateo deck here. So you, you, pick your, you pick your collection that you have access to. We're going to start by doing a, a simple draft. And the way this particular draft works for Hunters of the Mythos is we're going to select the number five here. And I'll, I'll show you how all this works. So the way, the way Arkham Draft works is you're given, you know, you've got your investigator. And it's basically every card that goes in your deck is you're given a choice of five. So like this one, I look at it, I look at it, and I go, um, hmm. Not a lot of great options, so I'm just going to go for Ethereal Form here. Okay, so I pick the card I want to draft, and that's been now added to my deck list here. And we keep going. We keep drafting cards. Keep drafting cards, and, then, and, and we'll keep doing this until we get our legal 30-card starting deck. This, this uh, site here is actually really clever because it, it'll account for things like versatile or, um, or forced learning, something that changes your deck, your deck size even at deck creation. And also, it will handle upgrades as well. So it's a really cool site. I'll put the link in the, um, in the video description, and you can take a look at it yourself. So the way draft works is we're, we draft decks, but not, not only that, but the league runner, he gives us two investigators, you know, two investigators to choose from. So we don't even get to pick our investigator. The ones I got, well, uh, you'll have to just wait and see. So um, what ends up happening is you get some crazy decks, although it's not full chaos mode. So you do get a little bit of control over, um, over what's in your deck. And I feel pretty good about some of the decks I, you know, decks I made. And I think um, a cho having a choice of five is, is pretty nice. Like, yeah, it's not it's not too it's not too limiting here. In fact, look at this. I'm already drafting a deck right now. Look at that. All right. And this this one's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm really uh happy with two out of the three decks that I managed to draft randomly, and we'll 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 see how they do. We have the Yithian Cup here, which is really interesting. In keeping with the theme of the Forgotten Age, we actually are gonna all be playing Yithians. And this is a custom investigator with custom deck building. Essentially you get you get all the cards from any class. But one thing about the Yithian is you have to you can't actually use any cards in your deck until you've unlocked the trait, until you've absorbed the knowledge of the trait. And the way that works is you have to um, pass difficulties, you have to pass um, an escalating difficulty intellect test in order to unlock a new trait. And once you do, you're able to commit or put into play or play cards that um, have that trait. So you can't use the cards until you've unlocked all the traits, which leads to some you know, interesting notions. So now all those traits, those little things in bold italic, those things uh, start really mattering. And this is going to be really interesting. I'm pretty happy with how my deck came out. I, um, I'll explain more once the, uh, once the show begins. 
but this is going to be a lot of fun. And then the last category here, serial hunters. This is really interesting. In fact, it's so interesting that it might be worth exploring outside of a league environment. So the way serial hunters works is the challenge we're um, we're undergoing is to essentially um, essentially what it boils down to is that we're trying to make our investigators last as long as we can, even from campaign to campaign, and we get to keep all of our XP we we earn. However, there are some interesting additional rules that uh, make survival quite difficult. For example, we our investigators we don't heal health and sanity between scenarios. That's that's actually kind of rough because if you um, if you ever go down to uh, damage or horror, you are immediately killed or, or insane, and then you have to pick a new you have to pick a new investigator. So that's going to be really rough. So now all of those healing cards that we all overlook, well, those are going to those matter a lot more now because um, because we carry over our damage and our horror. It also means we can't heal our trauma. So if we get trauma for a bad choice or something, well, that trauma is permanent. Not only that, but it lowers your it lowers your health or sanity permanently instead of um, how things are, you know, in the in the base game where it basically gives you a damage or a horror that you can heal. So uh, it's like a permanent health or sanity decrease. And then um, and here's where it gets really interesting. If a unique player card, such as an ally, is discarded from play by an encounter card effect or defeated by damage or horror, remove it from the game, remove all copies of that card from the game, and that card cannot be included again you know, forever. That's pretty crazy. So all of a sudden, we can't exa if, uh, say, Dr. Milan Christopher is... Um, defeated by like an arrows in the trees treachery he's gone for good so those unique allies we got to start really worrying about those it also means things like crypt chill like suddenly become a lot scarier if you're dealing with unique player cards that is really that is really interesting it really um raises the, the value of uh non-unique allies which is i think where we're gonna you know where i'm gonna take this okay and essentially what goes on is we um, we go along and whenever we, uh, you know, we expect our, our investigators to be killed or driven insane, and then we have to start off with a new level zero deck, even in the middle of a campaign. So um, yeah, that's going to that's gonna be really interesting. And the challenge here is to, um, is to uh, try to get our investigators to essentially survive as long as possible. So um, that's going to be tons of fun. As this is league play, something that's also interesting is that the league runner has... Um, Created objectives for us to uh, for us to accomplish for each scenario of the Forgotten Age. So, for example, um, scenario one, the Untamed Wilds, our league points are actually quite simple. We get a half a point for every uh, jungler ruins in play, and a half a point for every jungler ruins with no clue, except the expedition camp, of course. And then we get bonus points for actually making it to a, a good resolution. That's a really basic one. So essentially, what's going on is that we get. Um, our league score is based on is very specific for each um, each scenario, like Threads of Fate, every act you complete, um, Boundary Beyond. Let's see, all about the uh, Tanachidlan uh, locations in the Victory Display, that sort of thing. There are a few extra bonuses that's going on, and you know, there are a few b extra bonuses here. But then, uh, what's really interesting is if you decide to turn back time, then you have a secret scoring system. So that one is also really interesting. Um, what's also going on here is he has a couple of extra objectives. So like if you manage to get through the entire campaign without being poisoned, that's two points. Uh, if you manage to co if you manage to kill the Harbinger of Volusia, kill, not defeat, but kill in uh, scenario two or you know or um, later on, then you get some extra bonus points. Remember the Harbinger of Volusia um, is it, it vanishes from the board after a couple of successful attacks. So killing it outright is very difficult. Um, and actually, it could be overkill, so to speak, because you don't necessarily need to deal with it. Um, and then we get into the really interesting stuff. So he's given us some extra, he's calling them prowesses, um, prowesses and paths. So you, it's basically like an extra challenge you can add on to them. Now, I'll just come right out and say it. All of mine, I've, I've decided to do Snake Protection Agency. So you get 15 bonus points if you, um, if you manage to get all the way to Scenario 7, which is the Depths of Yoth without any Yig's Fury. So that is pretty cool. This one is also really cool, actually, called Bear Girls Mode, where if you, um, if you may remember in the Forgotten Age, you 
take these supplies that you, you know, this equipment that you bring with you to the jungle. So if you want, but if you do Bear Girls mode, you take no supplies. So uh, no rations, no medicine, no map, no compass, no gasoline, no anything. And uh, and then we also have here the Expeditious Expedition. This is basically if you want to speed run it, count the number of rounds you take to uh, go through the entire campaign, and then uh, you see if you get it. You know, if you see if you uh, manage to um, get you know go through the campaign fast enough. And then we also have uh, paths that we can choose um, that can also give you bonus points. Um, I'll be honest, I picked uh, Iktaka's path for all of them because you know I like I like the Snake Lady, and uh, if you manage to um, if you manage to uh, you know restore Iktaka's faith in humanity, you get five extra bonus points. If you fail to do that, you get instead negative two points. We also have one for Alethandro's path, or and we also have one for doing the um, forging your own path. Um, and uh, then it's also really nice. Um, the league runner gives it gives us some notes, um, you know, for you know some notes to like help you accomplish your paths without like completely screwing it up. For example, um, I totally forgot about chalk, how it prevents you from adding a vengeance point during scenario two. So I'm gonna have to take chalk if I'm gonna be going down the snake protection agency route. Things like that. Um, and he's got some extra little like you know clarifications here, you know, and, and that sort of stuff. So that kind of wraps up our, um, you know, our explanation of what these videos are going to be. I am um, entered in six of these divisions, and the schedule is uh, one scenario for every about two weeks or so, with a little extra time during the holiday break. So you're going to be seeing a lot of videos from me, starting with the one that's going to be starting right about now. All right. Good evening, everyone. We're going to uh, we're going to get started. We're going to play some. Uh, we're gonna play some Forgotten Age here. As promised, it's gonna be um we're gonna be playing as a Yithian. Okay, so um our Yithian here. Um the way Yithians work is that um you have to unlock traits as you go along. And so what I've decided to do, because um the Untamed Wilds is is it's pretty dicey. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna um we're gonna start things off with like very few traits, right? We're gonna do um just a bunch of innate skills. So once I make one difficulty zero, um intellect test i'll be able to be able to start using the innate skills freely um i've also got several insight events and then i've got four talents here so i've got i've got talents insights and and innates and then we'll be good to go okay so as promised we're playing the untamed wilds okay and uh first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw randomly draw our weakness okay Okay, we are going to shuffle up from the core weaknesses. We're gonna put one in the deck. And you know, I prefer not knowing, like not knowing what it is. Okay, just double checking that I got all my signatures worked out. Thirst for knowledge, out of body experience. Yep, thirst for knowledge, out of body experience is in the deck because we have 32. All right, we are, yeah, we're good to get started. So, um, yep, we, uh, as for equipment, I've already decided we are going to, um, we are going down the uh, snake protection, the Snake Protection Agency route, which, uh, as our um, as our league runner has kindly pointed out, that kind of requires chalk. So we've got our chalk to make sure we only we get zero vengeance. Um, I've also taken a binoculars and a blanket just for general usefulness and to avoid trauma. Um, and I've also taken a compass um, because it's useful in several scenarios. But also, I've discovered through um, you know testing out decks for this, there's a particular location that basically requires a compass to avoid um, spending resources, and that is a pain in the butt and can really slow you down if you're not careful. So I've done that, and then I had two left over, um, so I just did two provisions. I wish I could have done provisions and medicine, but you know we only get ten points, not eleven, so we're just gonna have to um, roll with that. All right. Yeah, we are playing Untamed Wilds. We've got everything set up. Um, we have our Chaos Bag with um, just two skulls and a minus five, so pretty nasty. All right, and um, yeah, let's 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 get started. So we start off we start off by drawing our opening hand. All right, here we go. Hope it's good. What do we got? Okay, well we don't need two higher educations, so um, we'll keep one of them because that's really nice. Okay, uh, two ri so rights to the occasion only kicks in at difficulty four tests, of which there are a few, but I don't need them right out of the gate. So I'll dump that, and um, if I remember correctly, the two clue locations don't show up until later, so I'll mulligan that as well. I guess what I really need is just more like skills that draw. So we're going to mulligan those. Okay, come on. All right, so we got our streetwise, so that'll help us with, with agility tests. 
Okay, so we've got we've got an insight, we've got two innates, and we've got two talents. So we're gonna we're gonna get started here. Okay, so if we remember correctly, we cannot put these things into play until we've unlocked the trait. So um, and this is kind of like a difficult part because in Untamed Wilds, you want to get out of the starting location as soon as possible because once you start drawing enemies, like you can it can get really dicey really fast. That being said, we do have a manual dexterity. So if we do draw an enemy, like you know, at the start of the turn, it won't be too bad. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off by um, I think I'm gonna start off by unlocking talents just so I can get these things into play. Um, that way I can I can start dealing with um, I can start dealing with with tests, you know, as they come up with just by using extra resources. So let's get started. So first thing I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna reveal a talent for my hand in order to make a difficulty zero intellect test. Here we go. Well, that's a good way to start the campaign, isn't it? It's just just open up with an auto fail. The streamer's curse. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's the way to go. You just start off with an auto fail. That's that's great. All right. Well, I want to get it. I want to get this into play. So I can because that's defensive. So here we go. We're gonna try again. Hey, what do you know? And we get to draw a card. Well, that's that's nice. Okay. So uh, we've unlocked talent. And uh, I'm sure I've got like a checklist. I'll figure that out um, some other time. And then third action, we'll get our higher education into play. So that way we can actually like deal with, um, you yeah, know, we can deal with tests and we've got enough cards. So we're going to be all right. Okay, so we'll do our, take our upkeep. Oh, it's it's thinking I have forced learning. So that's right. I got to like flip it over or something. Yeah. So it thinks I have forced learning. Oh, well. Okay, so that's that. And now we're going to go... Um, Oh, it won't let me interact. Well, that's too bad. Okay, I wish there was like a hotkey to add Doom to the Doom counter. That would make this much more convenient. So we are at one Doom, and uh, here we go. First, uh, first encounter card of the campaign. Let's go. And it's Ancient Evils. Ah, well, actually, it's not bad. It's not an enemy. An enemy would actually be worse at this point. So we're going to take a Doom, and uh, we're going to, I guess, keep going. Um, but now we're all set up, and. We're ready to deal with everything except maybe a um except maybe like a snake bite. So what I'll do is my first action is I'll put this streetwise into play. Alright, so now we're like set up. We're like we've got we've got talents unlocked. Um we don't have any of these unlocked, which might become actually become a problem. So I think I'm gonna go second action. I'm gonna try to unlock uh, I'm gonna try to unlock insight. Sorry, innate, not insight. We're gonna unlock innate. Um so we're currently two on one, is it? Yep, learned it up. So we're two on one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our higher education to go to three on one. That sounds that covers most of the bag. See, so yeah, it covers most of the bag right here. So we'll do three on one. Okay, sounds fine. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now we've unlocked and we've unlocked an eight. Okay, so now we're finally ready to start exploring. We're a little behind schedule, but we've got our traits unlocked. So third action, where you're going to start exploring. Okay, and there's Lost in the Wilds. So this thing I don't mind actually like failing because it's just it's just what's it um it's just some horror and it won't really affect us so we could just tank it and take three horror um which I think I'm gonna do actually yeah and I'll just save the good stuff for later so we're gonna tank it yeah um glad I didn't commit to that because that's a lot all right so we take three horror yeah, that's fine whatever all right new um go to upkeep. It still thinks I have. It still thinks I have it. What the heck? It still thinks I have force learning. All right, let me like get this off the board. Maybe if I delete it for the moment, but it might kick in if I unlock ritual. Ah. All right. Well, there it goes. All right. So now we're good. We can get some. That'll be good. It's good I unlocked an eight because that can get us some uh, cards and resources. New turn. We're at three out of six. So we're actually moving. We're actually falling behind schedule here. And this is what I was kind of afraid of, like getting an enemy in um in the opener in the opening location so what we're going to do first is we're going to evade this thing um we're going to go what says two on two and then this will put us at four over so i'll take it all right because you only get to double one skill icon all right so we're going to be four over okay very nice get a card okay and we'll um evade the bow constructor so now we need to get the heck out of here it's a hunter and this thing is going to be actually really mean uh, to us for the rest of the game so we'll um second action explore because we need to get out of here yep all right we explored somewhere that's good okay so this one we have a shroud three and we just don't want to fail investigations so um we don't have insight unlocked so we can't use that um 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go, I think we're going to go for a Eureka. So third action will investigate. Uh, Eureka will bring us up to four on three, and then we'll use uh, higher education to go up to five on three. Um, feels pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Yep, that's a minus two. So um, we're going to trigger Eureka. Okay. I don't really want that. So we'll grab another Eureka, I think. Uh, we don't have enough locations on the board to use Survival Instinct yet. Okay, shuffle that, and we get our clue. Okay, so we're actually like getting rolling, but I'm still feeling pretty behind. He readies. This guy's going to become a problem. All right, new turn. Well, we're actually upkeep. I shuffled, right? I thought I did. Okay, new turn. We're at four out of six already, so we've got to really start, you know, hauling, hauling here. Nope, that does nothing. Oh, interesting. Um, any empty location, Ancient of Fable. None of these are empty, so take that game. All right, so I guess what we're going to have to do is um, just start exploring. If we draw more treacheries, we're going to take damage, which is really unfortunate. But, you know, got to do what you got to do. All right, here we go. So first action, explore. Yep, like that. So we take a damage and we get overgrowth. Ugh. <sighs> I don't want to go back and engage that guy. This is going to get ugly. So I think what do I need to do? This is combat or intellect. Both of us are kind of nasty. Um, I guess we can go for another Eureka run to try to like improve this. Sure. So that'll put us four and four. And then I guess we can buy up with higher education. Fine. Fine. Okay. So commit to Eureka. And then we'll um, buy up to be six on four. Feels fine. Yep, that's good enough. Okay, so we'll trigger Eureka again. We'll grab... I think we're fine on cards, so we'll grab this manual dexterity. Okay, and we'll um, get rid of this overgrowth. Okay, and last action. There's not much to do but to keep exploring. So here we go. Okay, there we go. We get to explore somewhere. Um, unfortunately, it's not the location I wanted. I wanted the triangle because this guy is about to come and hit us, which he does. Okay, I haven't unlocked Insight yet. So I can't do that. So he comes and hits us. Okay. And uh, that's nasty. This guy's going to be really nasty for a while. Okay. Um, upkeep. We got another take heart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Don't really need take hearts right now because we are doing fine. So we're moving kind of slowly. Um, voice the jungle. Yeah. I think we'll be okay. Eh. This, this could become a problem. Fortunately, we have a guts to, like, you know, clap that back. All right, so we are two on two to evade. Let's just go for it. This will put us at six on two, which feels good. Okay, do that. Yeah, that's two out of fail so far. Ugh. All right, um, second action. All right, so if we, exp oh, damn it. I don't want to leave the clue behind. I think we might have to do a quick thinking. All right, so we're going to think quickly because we got to get stuff done now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go um, second action. We're going to evade. Quick thinking up to four on two. And we need to succeed by a bunch. So we'll go five, six on two. Six on two seems good. Do I want to trigger survival instincts? Not really. Uh, do I want to trigger survival instincts? No. Yeah. Because if I trigger Survival Instincts, I would end up going over there, and I don't really want to. Because um, there's three there's three possible locations I can run off to from here. All right, so we're just going to go um, four over. Okay, perfect. So we get our action back. Okay, and we evade this guy. All right, the sad part is we, like... So now we need to go unlock, work, unlock working a hunch, use working a hunch... And then explore away, is, I think, the, is the plan here. Okay, so right now the difficulty, we've unlocked two. So the difficulty's still one. Difficulty's one, so we'll go, we'll go two over. Okay, so we're going to unlock Insight. Nice. Okay, we've unlocked Insight. So now we're going to, oh, now we don't have enough money to play Working a Hunch. So I, I screwed that up. Oh, well, we'll come back to it later. We just got to get out of here. So we'll explore. Yeah. Whoops, that was a mistake. Oh no. Ugh. 
So we're gonna take we're gonna take a bunch of stuff. All right. So we don't want to get um. Yeah, this is going badly because we're out of um we're out of money to trigger um streetwise. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna trigger survival instincts. Uh, I won't trigger that. That's sadly that's really sad. So we're gonna be one over for this. And there's not much we can do about it. So we're just getting really bad luck. Yep, and we fail. Okay, so we are gonna take direct damage and become poisoned. Yeah, this is going really badly for us. We're just not making our tests. Yeah. But you know, streamer's curse. That's when the uh that's when the tentacles come out. Okay. Okay, so we become poisoned. Okay, and then um enemy phase, nothing happens. This guy readies. Oh, we take an we take another horror from this. Alright, um go to upkeep. Okay, there's another survival instinct. Might actually be useful. Uh, and we, um, yep, and we trigger the agenda. Okay, we're going to grab our agents of Yeg. We're going to make a willpower test. So currently we're two on three. This will put us um, six on three. Seems good. Good enough. Okay, so we draw a card. Okay, and then we reshuffle our hand. And shuffle this into the deck. Okay, so this goes back in our deck, and then we um, draw five new cards. Okay, we lose our resources. And then this goes back in our deck. Yeah, this is not going very well for us. All right. Okay, so that's nice to see, because this one we might be able to make the uh, investigate test. But first, we've got to make an evasion. All right, so there is a clue here, which is kind of handy. So we can actually use Inquiring Mind. So we'll start by evading, and we're currently two and two. Uh, this will put us two over. Um, this will put us six over. Um, I think I'll go for two over, because that covers most things. So commit that. Yep. Is it any card? So we're going to be two over. Nice. OK, so we evade this guy. OK, now we're going to try investigating, and we're going to use Rise to the Occasion. And that'll put us up to eight on four. Okay, good enough. All right, so we get the clue. And now we are going to explore. Come on, let's explore. Okay, so we end up exploring. That is, we were really in trouble if we couldn't get that off. So we're all set, we've explored. Okay, this guy's gonna ready and continue to hassle us. So now we're gonna go to upkeep again. Okay, well, that'll be handy for when we inevitably have to evade that guy again. All right, new turn. We're at one zoom out of nine, and let's see what we get. Okay, we take a damage and surge. We deal with another snake bite. <sighs> and I guess it's just for a damage. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and fail this. We fail it, and we take a damage. Okay. So now we just got to grab this clue and just start exploring, I guess. Um, what are we at? Two on two, and we can't really afford to do much else. So this will put us at four on two. Good enough. So we get, because that's minus zero, we get the clue. Um, this is kind of awkward because we have to make an agility test just to, um, just to explore. Yeah, we're not doing so well. Okay, what do we do here? Um, we can move and then evade again. That's ugly. Um, he's going to hit us no matter what. So I think what we do is we'll draw. And um, if I explore, I can commit this to go four on two. In order to get the explore off, there are... There's one place we can go, and there are... Let's see. There's still two treacheries in the deck. So that's kind of awful. So what we'll do is we'll move here get hit by this guy, and then we'll um, evade him next turn and try to explore out. So we move. Okay, and then that triggers. Yeah, we're not doing so well. Oh yeah, and then we'll die. Then we'll, then we'll be done. So we can't do that. So what we gotta do is we gotta make this test. But we really can't. Because we're, we're just tapped. Um, I guess we try to explore and hope for the best. So the best I can do is put in this quick thinking to explore. So we try to explore. We'll be four on two to make the uh, agility test. We succeed. That's good. Oh, and we get our action back. That's nice. So we explore. 
We get another treachery, and uh, that's going to go badly for us, because we're done now. Okay, and then we get to explore again. Okay, we get to go somewhere. That's good. Yeah. And then this guy's going to walk up, hit us, and uh, we'll be down. So we end up there. Uh, we don't trigger that. Boa Constrictor takes us down, and uh, that is all she wrote, ladies and gentlemen. Um, our Yithian uh, just did not... He just We just couldn't make tests at the beginning. And um, then the then the bow constrictor uh, came out. Bow constrictor is actually like a really big problem because um, it just keeps chasing you. If you draw a hunter like up at the expedition camp, uh, things are gonna go very badly for you, uh, which is what happened there. Uh, as for points, um, I guess I cleared three locations and I revealed another one. So I'll count up the points and um, we'll see what happens. Um, do we like? We've already been defeated, so I'll figure out how that works. And uh, for that, uh, if you know, if you came to see the stream, um, I'm sorry it worked out so badly, but you know, at least we got this one over with, and I uh, worked out the stream kinks, you know, with this one. So with that, um, everybody have a great evening, and uh, I'll see you in the next stream. I've got um, I've got Solo Lola coming up. I've got um, Solo Rita coming up, and I've got um, see, I've got I've got Jenny, I've got Marie, and then I've got my draft teams too. So I'm gonna have a lot of a uh, lot of Arkham coming up here. So if that's the case, um, everybody have, have yourselves a great evening and, uh, you know, see you in the next one.